Hello everyone and welcome to Reentry, an orbital simulator. This is an early access game available on Steam by Wilhelmsen Studios and it covers the Mercury, Gemini and Apollo missions. Basically you're acting as the astronaut in the cockpit, cockpit, uh, well in the capsule, well okay they don't like calling it a capsule, in the spacecraft and you're going to be flicking all the switches and all and I have so far done a Mercury flight and a Gemini flight and on the Mercury flight, I definitely did something wrong, uh, particularly on the parachute deployment because I smashed into the water and died. Um, on the Gemini flight, I did other things wrong, but that only prevented me from completing certain mission priorities, uh, like trying to use the thrusters on the adapter section on the trunk of the Gemini. And I had to deorbit immediately because I had accidentally uh, activated the RCS on the Gemini ahead of time. The RCS on the nose cone, which is meant only for reentry. So, so yeah. So you can get stuff wrong, and perhaps I should just um, go through some of the stuff that we have here. The material here, it, it's not a very expensive game actually right now uh, because it's in early access, and there are things that need to be fixed, obviously. But uh, currently it's on sale for $17 and the material that it gives you uh, is, I mean, more than worth $17 in terms of if you were trying to buy it as a book. Uh, so, you know, you've got uh, technical information here about the Mercury capsule. As you can see, it gives you the details of Redstone, Atlas, environmental systems, stabilization, retrograde rocket system, sequencer, electrical system. So it's very thorough in giving you a little briefing there. Of course, the main main goal here, the the interesting part, uh, is actually getting a practical view of things. So let's go through the pre-launch thing. I've done this before at least. See, I got three stars. I haven't gotten any progress here as far as levels. Uh, there is a campaign mode. There are lots of missions, and you can create your own missions. So that's all there. Uh, for Gemini, there is an Agena option if you want to do docking. I haven't gone through Apollo yet, so I don't know exactly what we have there. But yeah, so there are, there are possibilities here. Okay, so the prompts are given as this little text box down here, and it queues up the messages ahead of time. Uh, thankfully, uh, when I was trying this out for the first time, I was doing it during a live stream, and the developer actually popped in to check out how I was doing so uh, I got a few explanations about how this is all supposed to work but yeah so Tal Reyes welcome to Project Mercury my name is Patrick and I'll be your instructor here at the Academy Roger uh, you are currently sitting inside Mercury space capsule on top of the Mercury Redstone launch vehicle the LV is what will take the capsule to space indeed oh and by the way there is an external view so that's the external view. It renders uh, the area around Cape Canaveral basically, but not too far beyond that. So, Roger. There are plans to do Vostok, but that's not something that we've got right now. Uh, let's go back inside. We've got these. Uh, there's the F, F1, F2, F3 for selecting your view, but also you can use these buttons. So, I'll go back to Commander Seat. So, we've got a few sections the left side, the fuses, and uh, and at, uh, autopilot attitude and sequencer, the essential gauges. I've noticed that this little map thing here is just focused on Russia, so um, I, I just I was amused by that endlessly during the live stream, so I'll point it out here, there, and not mention it again. Okay, radio controls, environmental control systems, electrical power over here, and it describes circuits. I'll, uh, I'll leave you guys to read all the details. So this is the suit fan and we can uh, set it to number one. So Roger. And a, a right click moves something right and left click moves something left so you're gonna have to use both of those. And then we uh, connect the squib batteries arming squibs. Yes. I think that's that's it. Yeah, Roger. And then the pyrotechnics. And then we have to do the batteries, and so uh, instead of, okay, so we want the isolated batteries, uh, which is not that one. You can see the amps changing. 
It's sort of like, uh, you know, a flight sim, one of those study, study level aircraft that uh, people get for flight sim or for X-Plane 11. And uh, so you will see the electrical system function. Uh, not all the types of things that may happen will be simulated yet. Obviously, it's uh, early access and there are things that need to be added and fixed. But so far, I mean, you can see that visually it's very appealing. I think uh, there will be a lot of comparisons to go for Flight Mercury, but that was nowhere near as ready uh, in terms of everything as this seems to be right out uh, when on release into early access not really release release but into early access release this seems much more complete and it looks great so squibs are connected yep uh, and uh, voltage is over 28 yes it is okay so attitude panel there's a time zero button that's that and we will uh, remove the guard so that we can press it. F7 is for radio view and uh, it just shifts the camera down here. And these are radio selectors. We want it on UHF. Uh, yes, it is on UHF. And there's a high power and low power it's selected to high power and then C is a radio command menu this is your talking menu I would like to be back in the commander seat um, so you can report clock started started do a radio check altitude check sometimes you don't know where you are because the instruments the altitude here only goes up to a hundred thousand feet so doing the altitude check will allow you to get your altitude from mission control and that's pretty helpful Oh, by the way, you might have noticed that the music is fairly loud and the uh, sound is fairly loud. There is no volume contr uh, control right now. It's either on or off. So I decided to leave it on. And um, yeah, that will be implemented eventually. So anyway, uh, let's continue. Radio check. And it does the radio check as something that queues up here. So um, I expected some sort of pop-up or something, but... Um, we'll go Roger and then we gotta select this to low power and see uh, it, uh, what you got the capsule Capcom has said we need to do 5x5 five five, so that was in response to the radio check earlier okay when we can do the low power mode UHF is not always available so we can ensure that HF works and we'll do a radio check again and we got a 5x5 five five mission scratch pad I'll get to that and then we got that one but let me switch back to UHF high power and um, the scratch pad is like this and you have your checklists all sorts of checklists and you can run the checklist automatically and it'll highlight just like it's been doing what you need to click so it's really handy I mean uh, and you know there are uh, what you got? Uh, study level flight sims that don't give you the highlighting thing, so uh, and aren't aren't as thorough about the tutorial of how to fly the thing. So this is pretty good already, and you've got three spacecraft: Apollo, Gemini, and uh, and Mercury. So I'm very impressed considering the price. Um, so yeah, there's a there's a map, though I don't know exactly how that works right now. Or if it works. The checklists are much more complicated for Gemini and Apollo of course. No flight today because this is just training. And I have seen that uh, you can see in the upper left hand corner time to launch. It will launch at that time. <laughs> um, uh, so if you're not ready it's still going. So anyway. So that that's it for that initial briefing. So main menu. It'll give you other lessons about the systems and an exam. And then you can do the same for Gemini and Apollo. Uh, we, we should do a random one of these. Maybe the most interesting thing would be the Apollo computer system. 
I haven't fiddled around with that. So I'll, I'll do that next, but hold on, let me just go through everything here. We've got missions, Project Mercury. Uh, you can have a free play mission, early access missions. Okay. And then historic missions, Mercury Redstone 3, 4, and Mercury Atlas 6. And uh, you can make custom missions. And that, I believe, is under the workbench. And then campaign. There's this quick start, the bridge to the moon, and then you can start the campaign. I, I'm going to leave that for later. I'm not going to do that right now. So, And you can create your own profile. That's how I got my name, and I've selected Phoenix1 as my capsule name. I suppose I should have gone with 7, but whatever. Okay, so let's, let's see what the computer is all about here on Apollo. Okay, Apollo Guidance Computer Launch. Now, so far we're doing on-the-ground training stuff, and I will launch, and we'll launch with Apollo, I suppose. I've never done that before, so it'll increase the possibility of failure. <laughs> uh, I, I know what I did wrong on Mercury and Gemini when I uh, derped around in those, so I believe I might have, you know, possibly a little bit more success this time, but uh, I have not... Tried, I haven't gone through the basics on Apollo yet, so that'll be the most interesting one to offer here. Okay, but let's learn about the Apollo Guidance computer and how to interact with it. And we have 24 minutes. <laughs> okay, roger. Um, so this is the computer system here. Digital control computer used on board Apollo and in the lunar module. I don't know if they have the lunar module. I don't think so. So... Provides uh, computation and electronic interfaces for guidance, navigation, and control of spacecraft. AGC is used in most phases of the mission. Yep. We use the disky. Array of buttons and lights. AG AGC is controlled by verbs and nouns, entered numerically. Verb is an action to be performed, like changing the mission program, monitor data, change data. Noun is the location or register the yeah, verb. Well, think, things are happening. I think we're having all our goes. Man, I'm not ready to go. Okay. Um, for example, if the flight crew wish to run Major Mode 11, they enter Verb 37, which means Action Change Program, and Noun 11, which means Program 11. It can only run one Major Mode at a time. These are the Major Programs, and... Ooh, music. Alright, alright, I get it. Right? No, I'm in front of the AGC, it's fine. Okay, major mode one. Stop by pressing verb. Okay, roger. Three, and then seven, right? Seven? Yes, seven. Okay, roger. Press enter, verb 37. Next, press zero and one, and enter. Okay, it's program one. Yep, it has that there. Oh, wait, it went to program two. Hey, you weren't supposed to do that, were you? No at warning light illuminates, meaning the IMU isn't providing an attitude as it's currently aligning itself. If the AI will rotate to the pre... Oh, it automatically changed to program 2. Okay. Convention is normally used when operating the computer. The above sequence of buttons was verb, 30, uh, verb 37, enter, noun, 01, enter. Can be shortened to V37E, e, N, 01E. Okay, that's the initial one. Roger. Okay, so that's that. Now... I'll uh, point out because uh, during the live stream, people wanted to see where 
SCE to AUX is. SCE is here, and AUX is like that. So there you go. We have set SEE to AUX. And maybe, um, actually, let's take a look at the historical Apollo missions and see if we get struck by lightning, huh? So the mission where that occurs in is Project Apollo, historic mission. Ah, we haven't got the historic missions here yet. Those are tough to do, though, to be fair. And you can uh, get the testing mission here. And of course, you can do free play. But it would have been Apollo 12 where it got struck by lightning and they had to do SCE to AUX to save the darn thing. Okay, so let's, um, let's try, let's plunge into missions, Project Apollo, free play and just launch with it. And I'll try, I haven't done the tutorial missions for Apollo except for that computer one. And all I'm going to do is try and hunt for things and use the, um, the checklist. Okay, whoa, I think I just accidentally flicked something. Uh, <laughs> I, I just meant to, I meant to click my middle mouse button to pan the view. And I accidentally clicked my right mouse button and clicked that button and I don't know. Okay, let's hope that everything is alright. Roger. Okay, so we've got 24 minutes to get this right. M. Checklists. Pre-flight, sure. Check all panels. Done. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, Let, let's run it. Does it have anything to say? No. Not really. Who's preparations? Um, well, minus 25 minutes. Alright, let's run it. Okay, verb 3, 7... Enter zero one. Enter. Okay, DC indicator eight. Oh, over there. Network, you got it down. Got it all. Everything up. That's perfect. Twenty loud and clear. Oh, want to set that three now? Right. Hopefully main bus B is fine. Okay, FD... Okay, commander seat. Alright, so middle. And attitude rate high. Translational control power. Okay, rotational control power up. See now in the tutorials they'll tell you what the heck this stuff is, so that's good. Cause I don't know what B Mac is. It's something to do with attitude. But yeah, I mean this is a seventeen dollar program, and you could get a seventeen dollar book, and I don't think it'd give you quite the same hands-on idea of what goes on in here. Okay, our radios. Radios were over there, yeah. Well, you can definitely see how this checklist is divided up for two people. Well, there's supposed to be three people, but the middle seat, we're not doing much yet. Uh, you can use the arrow keys to pan sometimes. That's one of the things that seems a little bit buggy right now. Is Sometimes it lets me pan using the arrow keys, sometimes it doesn't. RCS command down. Thrust vector control servo. Where are you, thrust vector control servo? There you are. Uh, uh, oh, by the way, abort is not yet implemented, I think uh, he said, so be aware of that. Okay. All right, back to the computer. And sometimes if you've shifted your view, the 
little keys here do not get you exactly where you want to go. Herb 7, 5. But we're just typing in verb 7, 5 while pressing enter. Okay. Whatever they say. I'm probably already behind the game. We're down to 20 minutes. Okay, where is this T SQB tape spool? See, now if I had done the tutorials, I would probably know where this is. Or at least I would have more time to find out. Oh, there it is. Push. Alright, I think we're through that checklist. So, back. Boost. Okay, well this is prior to ignition, so I think we're ready. Is there anything else here that we should do? Well, let's uh, let's review what we're going to do on boost. Ignition command, launch vehicle engines, and then lift off, lift off verified, clock running, report, and you report clock running with the communicate. Well, there's only a radio check here right now, so maybe not. So it's not like Mercury and Gemini on that. I think it, uh, when it says auto, maybe maybe it automatically does that. I don't know. Um, Yaw maneuver report, roll and pitch program report. But it doesn't look like we have many buttons to push along the way up. And that makes a whole lot of sense, obviously. And then orbital insertion is when we really, uh, you can see the verbs and stuff like that that we need to do. But again, interesting, I had us type in verb 75, but then we didn't enter that or do anything in particular. So I hope that works out. I'll keep this up, but now we get to time warp because, well, I mean, we've got 17 minutes and I have nothing else to do. Uh, we can take a look outside. So this is what it looks like on the pad. Let's get a long view. And time warping is with the number keys, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, etc. In some cases, you will not be able to time warp, like during re-entry, I was not able to time warp. I can bring out the pad here, but I can't move it away from the view of the rocket, so let's not. Only in an emergency. We'll quickly review. There is this stuff. P11 Auto. I don't know what P11 Auto is. <laughs> no P11 key enter. I yeah. I, I don't know what all this stuff is. So let's hope it all works out fine. I don't think T-minus got... 15 okay. seconds. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Roger, we got a roll from Tower clear. Roger, roll. Okay, so here we go. The exterior graphics, of course, may need some work. I mean, the rocket looks fine. It's the flame effects and the RCS effects that might need a little bit of work. Uh, I forget exactly how to pan the camera. Oh, there we go. Oh, uh, it's only panning it temporarily. Oh, it forced me back in here. I didn't actually choose to go back in. As you can see, the, 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 this ski is showing us information. Our altitude and velocities. One minute in. 
I don't know what units it's using for altitude. One minute in, it should be at more than 7,000 meters. So, yeah, I don't know what kind of units it's using. I would expect to be more than 30,000 feet by now, so maybe it's just leaving off a zero. If that's altitude. It's very shaky. It would be very difficult for me to hit a button here right now. Stand by for mode one, Charlie. Stand by for mode one, Charlie. Mark, mark, mode one, Charlie. Eight, Does my communication eight, panel eight, have anything else? Eight, no, it's just eight, radio eight, check. Eight, 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 eight. Houston, you are go for staging. Import cutoff. Cut oh, we can go outside now. Uh, I, I, I get the feeling we're not meant to go outside, though. Yeah, uh, the camera isn't great here. I think it's better to just stay inside. So, we see the inboard cutoff on this panel, and everything is off on the first stage. Cutoff, ignition. Roger. And then we have five new engines on the second stage. I think I feel like the rumble is a little bit less now, which it should be. There's not a lot to monitor. A lot of this is switches. I don't feel like the... I don't know if the attitude indicator was working too well. It's tough to talk above the music. But the attitude indicator couldn't have been working since even now it would be pitched up by about 30 degrees. Maybe 20-ish, but it wouldn't be flat. It wouldn't be flat. Uh, we can change orbital. Oh, oh, we have this sort of orbital view. So we've got the equivalent of the map view kind of thing. Um, that's our current trajectory, it looks like. I don't know what this other line is. Oh, well, that's just the equator. No numbers, but I mean, heck. Photo camera. Um, the thing is, if I pan it, it doesn't stay panned. Maybe there's a different way of panning it. The arrow keys don't work. Okay, well, well no, that's, that's good, that's good. You can take your photos. No sound in space, apparently. Lens. <laughs> Come on, no hassle bad setting? Anyway, um... So that's a thing. Special effects. Vignette. Uh, I don't know if that's applied yet. Okay, well, that's something I really don't need at this point. I could always do that in post-processing. Stand by for S4B. Stand by for S4B to COI capability. Okay. Mark. Mark, S4B to COI capability. Roger. So now we can get to orbit on the S4B if something were to go wrong. Which sort of begs the question, I hope they're going to implement random failures on uh, free mode or something. Some, some way of having like an engine go out. But that'll be a long term goal. I don't think that's immediately necessary. 
necessary. Oh, now, now the pitch is up. Oh, interesting. Well, that's good. It ought to be. The music is certainly rousing already. Uh, inboard engine cut off. Okay, good. We definitely want that engine to go out, otherwise eventually the second stage has a tendency to shake itself to pieces. That's not good. We basically got a mid on the stage left. Alright, getting ready for a second engine cutoff. There we go. So we have a staging. We lost the launch escape system at some point, I don't know when. I didn't really register that. The J2 is very nicely modeled. Again, the uh, exterior wise made the flame effects are the main thing. I need some work. So I am assuming that this is dropping a zero here and that's the altitude. Or maybe it's the velocity. Actually, velocity would work too if it's in feet per second. So maybe that's velocity. I really need to. I wish the computer tutorial had told me that. Seems like important information what get this gets displayed down here. Interesting that it's going a little bit longer than I thought it would. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Just as I say that. Key release. Okay, am I needing to do something? Flight fighter, we are go. Confirm go. You are confirmed to go for orbit. Okay. Down EDS. Down. Down. Two engine out. Down. LV rates. Down. Okay. And that one. Okay. Manual pitch middle. Uh, I did not mean to click that. Okay. Glycol evaporation H2O flow. I need a pilot seat could finally be used for something. Well, it's blinking this key release thing. But I've run through that apparently. That's orbital insertion, but it didn't do this stuff. But then again, no, that that should probably be. I think that's supposed to be us using the computer to check various numbers. Anyway, I'll leave that for some other time. For now, I think this gives you a basic sense of what this game is all about simulator simulator um, I think there's a lot to be learned from it I think maybe the music needs a volume control <laughs> sorry um, let's go back to the menu and talk about it so yeah I mean it gives a lot of opportunity to learn things that would be hard to learn otherwise and uh, you know practical the practical side of what's going on inside the spacecraft when they are doing their various stuff. Uh, trying to make a rendezvous. I mean, I guess the pinnacle of this for me would be trying to make a rendezvous with Agena uh, using Gemini. Some, to some extent, uh, we need the communications. It doesn't look like communications is fully implemented on Apollo. Because otherwise we, we don't really know when to do TLI, translunar injection. Uh, we would need to have mission control tell us that and similarly a lot of information to do with rendezvousing with Agena has to be communicated from the ground they tried to use onboard ways of doing the rendezvous with Agena but it wasn't sufficient uh, read that in Michael Collins's book carrying the fire so yeah uh, there's work to be done 
but it's looking pretty good and it's just fun clicking switches and the obviously the checklists are very well done the information presented is uh, presented in a professional way things are clean um, it is uh, obviously a piece of work that uh, took some time and effort so I'm, I'm glad to see that in an early access game sometimes they don't look so polished so uh, on that first look of re-entry and orbital simulator and hoping for more stuff to come out of this I'll say thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this video if you did enjoy this video please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time